I won't screw up this time. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> He's not going to screw up this time. I'm Good not going to screw up this time. Hey, Thursday morning, 8.30. We're usually here with some goofy antics. <laughs> quality camera work for sure. I got it all set up. Yeah, good. Awesome. So, so where are we, Tom? Where are we? We're at the Martin Luther King Community Food and Garden and Learning, Learning Center. L Learning Garden, yeah. Learning Garden yes, or yes. whatever, yes. And we are going to, what are we going to do today? Well, first of all, this is where it all started for people that remember episode one. But anyway, so yeah, we're here for something that we want to announce today. And I'm going to have Kelly get started here a little bit it's, on it. It's local food. It's it's what? Local food. How do you spell that? L-O-C-A-L. <laughs> oh, no, I just screwed up. Local Food 101. Hey, folks. I am starting a 12-session series on local food beginning next Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30 right here in the beautiful Martin Luther King Park at the Community Food and Learning Garden. This is a free course. There's 12 sessions. 12, like, guys. 12, 12 sessions. Not 12 weeks in a row. 12 <laughs> sessions. And we will finish... At the end of September, I believe September 22nd, with our Harvest Fest, which has live music, bring, you can, you can have alcohol in this park. <laughs> and so I'm sure you're going to be bringing your Master Brew, Home Brews, Bell Smith, <laughs> Tap Room stuff. Oh gosh, yep. We always talk about beer. I don't know why. Because, okay. <laughs> because it's local food. But why don't we do this right, though, Kelly? You're just going to use chalk. Why don't you? Why, I like what's, chalk. What's it's behind, what's behind the... This. this was a part of the proposal, Tom, this chalkboard for learning. What's, what's, what's behind the curtain here? I have no idea. You brought this. What is this thing? Okay. Where did you get this tart? This thing. Oh, my gosh, Tom. Look what Tom made. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's my dorky caricature. <laughs> this is awesome. It's the mystery. Why? Thank you, Tom. Yep, so there anyway. we go. Class starts March 5th. But <laughs> more importantly than Local Food 101, what are we doing in the garden today? We're going to actually, kids, it's it's <laughs> kids, <laughs> It's cold out here. It is cold out here. <laughs> Welcome to April in Minnesota, but we're over the hump. Did you guys look at the calendar for weather? We don't have a freeze in the forecast for like a week. So we are planting cool season crops. Let's head over to the garden let's and see what they are. I, Will that be okay this, with, the, with pretty, the gale force winds coming from well, the southeast? Is it just going to... Let's put it down to the ground. Is it so. going to plaster it to the board? <laughs> anyway. This All right. Awesome sign. Thanks, All Tom. right. Yep. Okay. Here we go. So here's your clipboard. Can you... Can you do camera work animals? Uh, and I'm walking because, okay, here we, we go. We love doing this for you, to teach you this stuff. We've got all kinds of things planned for, for this. Um, for this she gave me seeds and, summer. and my clipboard. We've got seeds, clipboard. seeds on the clipboard. So, hey, what are we planting today? We're going to we, be doing some cool we, weather crops here. Yes, some. and we don't have a lot of rain coming for a couple of days, so you've got two days to get your cool season stuff in. We're going to plant some radish today. Radishes. We're going to do some I mustard greens. Mustard greens. Mustard greens, which I have actually already started. Yep. I like to broadcast seed in flats. Look at that. And then, and then scoop them out. Oh, my gosh. I forgot my widger, Tom. Your do you have widger. a table knife on you? A table knife. Um, a spoon? No. Um, I might have oh, something wait. in the car. But... Oh, perfect. I have your broken it's tool that, that I just love. Tool. It's that so fancy have, tool from um, episode we have nine. Got, we've got some <laughs> Ethiopian kale from the seed library. We have got some mustard greens from the seed library here in this middle section, and then we've got curly kale from the seed library. And I have broadcast these into my flat, and we're going to scoop them out and plant them in the ground today. We're we've also do that. got, we've also got um, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and some leeks. Yep. So we're going to put these in the ground because, believe it or not, it is planting time. It's been planting time for a couple of weeks. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna are try. You, I'm trying to get you on because you're the star here. So let me. Now. <laughs> so, All right, here we go. Watch. <laughs> here we go. Here's these. Seeds, more seeds, okay. more seeds, and I got the seeds. Okay. Well, I like a nice, neat, tidy garden. You can do what you want, but I figure if you're gonna do it, do it really well because an organized garden makes it easy to harvest. It makes it easy for pest management. You're walking in the bed again, Tom. I catch. Oh I can't God. see and oh, walk at the same time. <laughs> so I like, I like straight rows for things that need straight rows, and broccoli is one of those. I think it's really great. And when you look on the back of your package and it says to space them out every 24 inches, ignore that. You want to space them closer because a denser planting retains moisture, and it also cuts down on weed growth from the weed load that's in the soil from the year before. We are blessed with gorgeous Olmsted County compost. Look at this, yeah. When we did this garden, we partnered with Olmsted County um, and also Parks and Rec, of course. 
course, because this is a public garden space and they delivered 40 yards of compost. And we started this garden as a smother and cover, so we hardly have any weeds here. It's gorgeous. So this I has been uh, one. <clears throat> yep. I just got a string line down here. And uh, like we talked about in, was it season one, episode nine, Tool? <clears throat> yes, season one, episode nine, the yeah. famous minion tool man or something. Yeah. <laughs> line. I've got hunks of rebar here. My favorites are my son's broken drumstick because yes. they go into the ground so easily. They're great. How do you and break a drumstick? <laughs> you really rock and roll, rock and, rock and roll. Symbol, rock and, roll. <laughs> and then I've got a really nice professional set here that I've got down okay. that also works as a dibble. Uh, you can also use a straight edge, your yard stick, a, a stake, a bamboo stake that's yep. and you can't really put it into the ground anymore. But it's great for wedging a line. So I'm going to show you these two things and we are going to plant our Brussels sprouts here. Let's do some Brussels sprouts. And of course, I've got the back packages here that tell you, you know, how long it takes, you know, for uh, the seeds to emerge. Um, and what that's really important because Kelly kind of reminded me that uh, you have to do this in order to um, in order to uh, know when to take your vacations, when you're going to be around, when these things start popping up and things. So um, that's really so, what's key, yep. So these I started back in February, I believe, Tom. Yep. And um, they're this big now. They're great. They're about a four-inch seedling. Yep. And these are going in the ground. And you notice I am not turning this soil over. I want to maintain soil biology here. I want these leaves to remain as leaf litter and decompose for organic matter, help to retain the moisture as a surface covering. So I am just measuring to put this little Brussels sprout right in here. I'm tucking him in. Perfect. And he's, he's been, he has been, um, uh, I, put those seeds in. I planted these, I think in late February, along with my leeks, maybe in March. I can't okay. remember. It's all on my calendar. Yep. But I have hardened these off outside. You want to, if you've started your seeds at home, you want to begin to harden them off in the, in the shade, not in the bright sun, but keep them out, you know, an hour a day, then the next day, two hours, next day, three hours because any amount of light that you've had inside is nothing compared to our glorious sun <laughs> the soil. And oh the gosh. sun, boy, we got a nice sunny day here. Yes. But at least yeah. we don't have rain. Okay. And so, I know, you know what, hardening off this spring has been really <laughs> a challenge. Yeah, so. so like I said, you want to pack them in a little tighter. So this is about probably 12, 13 inches. So I'm going to do half. So I am laying this down measuring and then I'm flipping it halfway. And then I'm going to go about halfway here to pop another Brussels sprout in. Look at her go. And I'm just following my straight edge and picking up this trash as I go. <laughs> this is a windy site that blows a lot of trash yep. in. So in this, in this section here, I've got a lot of, in this section here, I've got a lot of Brussels and this guy's kind of teeny weeny. Um, so I'm not gonna plant him. I'm gonna go to the next one. And okay. I push up on the bottom here and lift out the Brussels sprout. <laughs> Lay this down here on the ground. Tom, I am on the ground. Oh, yes, oh, the, the ground. Okay. Yes. Lay this down here. I'm gonna flip it over, and the next one's going in right here. And I'm just going in a line right here by the um, by my string line. Okay. So. This is perfect. So Tom, what are we missing here so far? Um, we are missing um, water. No. Water and, and? plant label. And a plant, oh my gosh, so that's the key. So the, the real challenge. Oh my gosh, here's my favorite plant label of all time. <laughs> Radish. My son wrote this down when he was, I don't know, but I can never get rid of this one. Radish I know, that's great. classic. As, as, as parents, that's what we yep. do. So I am and it's good to have a permanent marker and yep. popsicle Sharpies sticks or awesome. Sharpies, popsicle yep. Popsicle sticks, Sharpies, um, labels. So I'm going to grab these labels here. Okay. And last year, this bed had beans in it. So I follow crop rotation because it's important to maintain that soil health and you want to make sure your nutrients are leveled off. And the beans um, added nitrogen to the soil. They fix nitrogen from the air and put it down into the soil. So this bed and the bed that Tom is half sitting in was <laughs> beans last year. I am sitting. I am laying on the ground. <laughs> I guess uh, it's hard. <laughs> loaded with beans so these two beds are really rich in nitrogen yep. and brussels sprouts are heavy feeders and i bet on the back of that brussels sprout package tom you cannot find days to harvest yep. do you know why that is uh days to harvest yeah well it, we need to know we have to look at the packaging right but it's not on there do you know why uh days to harvest 
Okay, now you get me. Because they're one of like the longest crops you can grow in your garden. You can keep like growing, they keep growing, and you harvest them and harvest them over yeah, and over and again. Yep. Harvest them like Thanksgiving after we've had our freeze. They're hanging out in the garden. There's little stalks, these poor little Brussels sprouts growing out of the stem. And they just love being out here. They're like soaking up all summer, waiting for harvest time. Late October, Thanksgiving. Yep. We're not even going to put a harvest date on this because. We're going to forget about them all summer long. We're and these are radishes? These are the radishes, these right? Are radishes. We're just going to make sure they're watered. And that's it. So we've got Brussels sprouts. Normally what I would do on a label is I would put the date. What's today, Tom? April today 20th. is April 28th, so 2022. <laughs> so I put 428 on my label. And then, geez, like 120 days to harvest. And you can program that into your phone. Harvest Brussels sprouts. Or you can write it on your calendar. Or you can just have a fun family free for all and just go out and check them every couple of weeks to see if they're ready. And these are uh, Philadelphia white, Philadelphia white box. Yeah. So here's the here's the uh, seed package from the seed exchange. And look at this. Here's so as Kelly said, it, it has instructions. Sow seeds as soon as soil can be worked in spring. It's been workable. It's just it's been, been cold. It's been workable for probably about a month. Yeah. Yep. Planting full sun, which we are. And then, it, like she said, successive plantings can be made every three to four weeks throughout summer and fall to provide a continual harvest. Continual so that's where it goes. And I mentioned the crop rotation to yep. maintain soil health. So at the seed library, you can find this beautiful little handout that we've got. You can also find it online. Hey, we should post this PDF in the comments. We can do oh, that. We, are we can do that. We can do that. And yeah. this was created by University of Minnesota Extension educator Julie Weisenhorn, and I adapted it for the seed library so we could have a bunch of handouts. And it just talks about plant families. And if you can divide your garden into four, it's set up by year one, two, three, and four. And the plant families, you rotate through, and you are going to have the best soil for the life of your food, offering nutrient-dense food to your yep. family, to your friends, the community. It's awesome. I don't know if I have anything else to say, Tom. <laughs> You've been doing all the talking, and that's great. What do you have to say? Um, what do I have to say? I'm going to go get the water while you figure well, out what I'm, to say. What I have to say, <laughs> what I have to say is um, it's all this seed uh, library and all this early planning, transplanting, all this. This is pretty awesome, but I'll tell you, it's been a really tough uh, month here to get started. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, our next episodes, and we're actually going to be out on some of our projects. Look at her going there. So she's actually she's watering. She's watering in going. these Brussels because it's a yep. windy day, and we don't want them to get dehydrated. Yep. And I will finish planting this row. And we will get this row done. But uh, I think we've been on here long enough, so I'm going to get up here. And then we're gonna... <laughs> all right, all right. And then... <laughs> Don't walk in the bed. I'm not going to walk in the bed. Okay. And everybody, here we, <laughs> here we are. And remember, local food. Local food 101. Local food 101. March this 5th. is be the place. And we'll post bring a chair. all the events. Bring a chair. Yeah, bring. we're going to post all the events. Bring a chair. Something it's warm if it's chilly. Hey, and if it's raining, we're going to meet Saturday morning instead in the garden. So the rain dates will always be Saturday. And bring a beverage. And, and have fun. And be fun. It's in the evenings. It's right after. Oh, we yeah. have guest speakers coming. Oh, my guest gosh. Guest speakers. We've How got many? Revolutionary Earth coming as a best speaker. We've got Chris Shad from the Bee Shed coming to talk about pollinators and honey and how pollinators are so important. We've got Heidi Cass from Backyard Bounty Urban Homesteading to come talk about growing mushrooms and growing chickens. Eggs. Harvesting eggs. We've got <laughs> we've got Dan Dahlenberg and um, 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 Ethan Swanson coming. Ethan, Ethan Swanson's yep. going to do a lesson on cover crops. Cover and why crops. Important. And you should be covering this <clears throat> your crop. all the time. Yep. Cover your crops. Yep. Cover your crops. There you go. So please join us. Thank you so much. And, and rock, rock your, your day. day. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>